Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another edition of Deportes Nation. I'm Alex Parra, and today you see him on screen, a very special guest, a lot to talk about, University of Houston head women's soccer coach, Coach Jaime Frias. First of all, Coach Frias, how are you? Good day. Good day. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for having me here. Um, I've always appreciated Houston this time of the year. You know, uh, in Virginia, I often, where I came from, I often check the weather, and they're in 20 <laughs> degrees right now, so I'm in... Uh, light long sleeve shirt and shorts and uh, loving life right now. So thank you for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure, Coach. A lot to talk about, and and, and I've been uh, I've been very uh, fortunate to get to know you a little bit this season. Um, first season in the Big Twelve. Maybe that's a place to start. Your second full season at at U of H. Uh, it's a program that continues to improve in in every way. And and I'm I'm trying to be objective here because that's the truth. But how was it competing against some very very uh, storied uh, uh, experienced and high quality uh, programs this year in the Big 12. Yeah, it was a it was actually a great year for us, Alex. We we're so proud of the first year, even though the results didn't show it. I think our team was better than the results. Um, you could see our team and our style um, come through, in particular in the first part of the year as we were getting going. The challenge for us this year was trying to bring a group of women together out of the. 30 plus women on our roster, over 20 of them were new to the team. So we always knew that that was going to be our main challenge is how can we bring the group together to not only compete for each other, but to understand our methodology and the way that we wanted them to play. As the year wore on, you can see them trying to grasp, but we knew it was going to be a year of learning um, and no better way to do that than the Big 12. And I felt like in the majority of the games and not all the games were extremely competitive. And so something to build on for sure. And we can't wait for the spring season because that's where all the teaching is, is that part of the year. Coach, you, you, you faced uh, universities like Texas Tech, like the University of Texas, among others. But, but I mentioned those two because those programs uh, have such a long history of, 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 of high quality, of competitiveness. It, it, it so much goes into building a program. You know this, Coach. You live it. Uh, recruiting. Uh, the right time, the right place. Uh, the athletes have so many options these days. Um, are you on your way at U of H? Are you getting the support from the administration, from the university? Um, it's, it's, I think, the highest level that I've seen consistently uh, from Cougar sports, probably in the history of, of the university. Yes, I think this is another reason why I took this job is uh, the support that we're receiving from the administration. Uh, my vision is their vision is to make this one of the top teams, not only in the Big 12, but hopefully in the country. And you see other sports teams within our athletics department doing that already. And so there's phases that we're going to face the program into with uh, upgrading the facilities, increasing budgets, which will allow us to recruit not only nationally, but internationally um, in the way that we travel. So I think uh, we're at the doorstep, at the front door of what's to come here. And so, yes, there's a lot of support and uh, we're extremely excited. If you look at Texas Tech and Texas, those two um, programs in particular that you mentioned, when the coaching staff came in, you know, there was times where Texas didn't even make the conference tournament yeah. when the first coach came in. And I remember playing Tom Stone when I was the head coach at Stephen F. Austin and we were winning three to zero and we were a Southland Conference team. That was his first year there. And so credit to those, both those coaches that have done a phenomenal job, but let's not forget where they first started. And this is just where we are today. And my hope is that if you're interviewing me three years from now, we're talking about maybe a conference championship and an NCAA run, which is the goal and the mission of, and the vision of this team. Coach, let's go back a little bit because your, your story to me is amazing in, in, in many ways. You're, you're a soccer guy. A, a soccer mind and you've lived it uh, there there are many that haven't maybe followed a similar path to yours but but you have a lot of Houston connections Houston roots you grew up here you went to high school in in the Katy Independent School District and maybe we start there did, did you see yourself when you were at Maid Creek thinking you know what one day I'm gonna be the head coach at the University of Houston we didn't even have university programs back yeah. back then yeah no my at that time my also purpose was this every young person that loves the sport is to some way somehow work themselves into the professional arena and that was always my dream when i was in high school is how could i get myself there um oddly enough you know i didn't really start playing competitive 
uh, select soccer until my sophomore year. Um, you know, my parents just couldn't afford uh, leagues like that. And so I grew up playing um, in church leagues and uh, Mexican leagues. And it wasn't until um, when we moved to Katy from the Spring Branch District that I found my way to the Houston Hurricanes where a young Glenn Davis and Tony <laughs> Johnson were still there. I think they're still young, but they were much younger then. And so those were my connections. We would train at Bear Creek Park and play our games at Bear Creek Park. And and so, yeah, all the all, a lot of the players that are played against and with now are are actually coaching. So Chris Bandy is at UConn. Yeah. There's a, a, a coach from Notre Dame that coaches on the men's side that played for Glenn in the Hurricanes. Josh Gardner yeah. is also a coach. And so there's a lot of history here. But, yeah, this is a, another big reason why I took this job is I feel like it was homecoming for me. And reconnecting to those the, to the past has been a lot of fun over this last year and a half that I've been here. Coach, you talk about now the history of Houston soccer. I, I similar to you, I wasn't born here, but I, but I was raised in Houston. Mm -hmm. I came here in the late 80s. I, I, I call it the Dark Ages, Coach, before the Dynamo, before certainly the Dash. There was no professional soccer in Houston or the level you talked about, the Hurricanes, uh, which was, I, I would consider that semi-pro or the highest level we could, we could get at that time. But from the late 80s, early 90s to where we are today with the Dynamo in their run, with the Dash professional team, with U of H women's soccer, um, Houston Christian, formerly now HBU, uh, so many schools in the area, clubs. It, it, it's, it, to me, this is probably one of the better moments when it comes to our sport in the city of Houston. I would agree with that, Alex. I would have, if I, I did not picture this um, being like this back when we were growing up because we didn't have that North yeah. Star, right? We didn't have that, that, uh, uh, that place to dream upon. But I feel like this is great now for the youngsters that are here because they do now have a goal in mind. If you do want to be a, a professional and now with the academy system in place on the men's side, you can go play for the Dynamo uh, or one of their affiliates. Uh, if you're on the women's side, you have the Houston Dash and the NWSL that's continued to grow. Or if your aspiration is just to play at a top division one school, uh, you can aspire to play in one of the three, which is Houston, Rice, or HBU. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a ton of options that just opened up for these youngsters, which in our generation wish we had, yeah. you know. So we're very lucky to have that now. Here on the Portes Nation, talking to Coach Jaime Frias, University of Houston head women's soccer coach. Coach, we've talked a little bit about the history of, of, uh, of Houston soccer and, and, and your involvement as a, as a player, as a coach. Um, you've lived a life. But, but let me kind of maybe take us in a different direction. Now that we are maybe living some of the better moments, not only in Houston, but I think in general in the United States, there's a lot of families, Coach. And, and for full disclosure, I'm the director at SG1 Soccer Club. I see it every day. The pathway for many families is, you know what, I play the sport not necessarily for fun, but because I want something out of it. And specifically, to go play high school first, uh, then play college and get an education. Where I'm going with this, Coach, is that this has become a bigger business than in the past. And mm -hmm. part of that is what, what should be realistic expectations for families? You deal with this every day, Coach, where I'm sure you get 20 calls a day from a family saying, look, my daughter is the best player in the United States. You need to give her a look. And you realize maybe that isn't the case, that in their minds, maybe they're not prepared. I know that's a lot to throw at you, and you can pick whatever you want, but have we become maybe too overly focused on, hey, I need to get that Div 1 scholarship versus let's enjoy the game, let's grow, and all the lessons the game can teach us? Does that make sense? Yes. I think there's, um, you hit on a really good point in that there's, you know, let's take our program, for example. We, we might recruit five players a year, five to six. And it's very position specific. So you might be a wonderful center back. But we're not looking for a center back here. Yeah. <laughs> might be looking for three midfielders. Yeah. So a lot goes into it. And so the scope just shrinks as you get higher up the level. So is that a a, a goal of yours? Should it be a goal of yours? Is that just depending on um, on your skill level, your skill set, and where you are as a as an athlete? But it it is really hard um, from our perspective. It, it's just. Uh, the spots are very limited and just depending on the level, the higher the level that you go, obviously the harder it's going to get. 
And yes, I think you should enjoy the journey and all that. It's, it, you know, as youngsters, my advice to them would be worry about your development, worry about getting better, worry about um, or, or focus on how to be a great teammate. These are all things that you can control. And by the way, these are all things that are help that will help you achieve your goal. Um, I think those things should come before the goal, and we call it being process driven. You know, am I as fit as I can be? Am I uh, uh, a great student of the game? Am I watching the game? Am I working out outside of practice sessions? Um, am I encouraging my teammates? Uh, you're never going to hear a coach that that says, you know. I don't want a player that's not encouraging their teammates. I don't want a player that's not fit. I don't want a player that's not skilled. You should focus on being all those things first, and then the rest will come. Do you feel, Coach, that 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 parents are unrealistic, maybe, about where their son or daughter um, are and where they should be going? Like you said, I, I give it this context, Coach. The one percent are the ones that get to play on the national team or play professional or even play at Div 1. Uh, what happens to the other 99%? There's still a journey there. There's still lessons to be learned that are going to make us better uh, administrators, doctors, lawyers, uh, CPAs. Um, that's, I think, the reality. I don't know if you concur with me, but that's the, 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 great, the bigger picture that I see in, in youth soccer uh, today. Yeah, I think, I think for those, I think, first of all, it should, be, it should not be parent-driven. It should be player driven. So what does the player want and what can you do as a, as a parent to support that? And so I've been in many instances where the where the process is a parent driven approach and that seldomly works and that the parent wants it more than the player. Yeah. And ultimately the player, um, because it's not their goal and it's more of the parent's goal, it doesn't work out at the end. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be really careful when it comes to that. And like you said, there's so many lessons to be learned in sports. And so can you take away those lessons? And by the way, it's particularly in women's soccer, there are so many opportunities. And so I would I would encourage everyone to put their ego aside and say, you know, there are uh, some great Division II schools. There's some great NAIA schools. There's some unbelievable Division III schools. If I really love the sport and want to focus on my academics, can I join the club team in that university? Mm -hmm. University of Houston has a club team there that the women can participate in playing because they love the sport. And so there's a place for everyone that wants to continue to play and enjoy the game. You just have to be realistic, like you said, and what is my place and what is my level of commitment up to this point that I want to continue to invest in the game. Con nosotros el uh, profe de la Universidad de Houston, don Jaime Frías. Jaime, quería platicar un poco en español porque... Creo que es, es parte de, de, primero, nuestra cultura en, en, en Houston, en Texas, en los Estados Unidos. Eh, platíquenos un poco sobre las oportunidades que existen. Eh, en el pasado yo he visto muchas latinas, en este caso, profe, que no han, no han tenido la cultura de pensar en que un día ellas pueden jugar a nivel universitario. Ahora, ¿conocen el deporte? Porque siguen a papá, a abuelo, a tío, y lo conocen, ven. Pero nosotros, los latinos... Y estoy generalizando. No les hemos dado la oportunidad de que jueguen. Eso está cambiando, está mejorando. Pero, profe, yo veo tantas oportunidades para latinas que entienden el deporte, tienen el deporte en su cultura, y ahora un día pueden jugar a nivel universitario. Sí, estoy de acuerdo contigo, Alex. Las oportunidades están ahí. Este, yo lo que le diría a los papás es que las apoyen. Si es algo que ellas quieren hacer, es posible este se ve al día al día este el, el número de las muchachas que están jugando a nivel universitario que están estudiando y que están desarrollándose sí. como personas y como atletas eh, a este nivel entonces el mensaje para los papás el mensaje para las para los papás es el apoyo para las muchachitas que están allá escuchándonos es, eh, en particular de Houston que le echen muchas ganas que se aferren al, a la meta que tienen, porque es una, una, una oportunidad que les puede abrir muchas puertas. Y, profe, parte de esa oportunidad es no únicamente ser una buena jugadora en este caso, pero también las calificaciones, el, el, el aspecto y el lado de, de los estudios. Eh, es Honestamente, para entrar a, un, un, a una universidad como Houston u otras, es posiblemente lo más importante, el aspecto académico. Así es lo primordial. 
este, las calificaciones, porque se puede ser una muy buena futbolista, pero sin las calificaciones no, no este, les van a dar entrada a las, a las universidades. Entonces, es lo, como les digo, es lo primordial. Es, es, eh, en México le decíamos eh, no, cinco o cuatro, no, no cinco o cuatro. <risa> Necesitan ocho, nueve y diez. Sí, sí. Entonces, es, es, es algo que ellos, las muchachas, tienen que prioriz priorizar y, este, y echarle muchas ganas en lo académico. Eh, en estos momentos, platicando con Jaime Frías, el, el profe encargado del programa de, de damas de, de mujeres en la Universidad de Houston, Profe, eh, ¿cómo ha visto el desarrollo del fútbol en nuestra ciudad de Houston? Usted lo ha vivido de, desde joven en, en, uh, en Maid Creek, en la prepa de, de Maid, Creek, Maid Creek High School, y, a, y ahora encargado, yo digo, del programa más importante eh, a nivel universitario en nuestra ciudad. Eh, me imagino que ha sido un, un, un sueño completo, pero no solamente cómo hemos llegado a este punto, pero ¿qué otras metas tiene para usted en, 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 nuestro, en nuestro mundo de fútbol? Sí, este... Ha crecido mucho el fútbol aquí en, en esta ciudad, Alex. Como estamos platicando fuera del aire, no había equipo profesional masculino, femenino. No había, no había oportunidades universitarias en la Universidad de Houston. Entonces, esas oportunidades ya están aquí para los niños y las niñas que quieren avanzar en el deporte y avanzar en lo académico. Y, este, y yo me siento muy, muy orgulloso de dónde hemos llegado como, como ciudad en el deporte, brindando todas esas oportunidades para los muchachos y las muchachas que quieren tomar ventaja de eso. Entonces, para mí la meta es seguir creciendo el deporte en esta ciudad que me ha dado mucho. No nomás la ciudad, pero el deporte de fútbol me ha llevado a, no solamente a, a muchos lugares de, dentro de este país, pero internacional. Y mi sueño es que eh, esas oportunidades es, les abran puertas a a la comunidad latina en, este, en esta ciudad. Coach, it's, it's always an honor to talk to you, and I'm sure we could spend three hours or more uh, about, about all of the soccer-related topics. But maybe to close, Coach, where, where, where is U of H as far as uh, the plan? Uh, year two, first year in, in the Big 12, you, you're getting the support from the administration. By the way, new football coach, uh, Willie Fritz, coming in. So, <laughs> so I know the university isn't afraid of making moves, but... But, but talk to us about that piece of it first. U of H women's soccer, where do you see the, the plan in two, three, four, five years? Right. I think the ultimate goal is to compete, compete for championships. And we don't want to put a timeline into that. We're not saying in year five, so we can win a championship next year. We're not going to shy away from that. So that's always the goal. Uh, to get into the NCAA tournament, to advance in the tournament, is another one of our goals. And we don't want to put a timeline on that. As coaches, we're very impatient. We don't want to get there in year five. We want to get to year three. But that is the plan that's in place. And to do that, you have to recruit really good players. You have to develop them as well. You can't just roll a ball out and say, hey, go play. You got to continue to grow and develop that player. Uh, you got to continue to enhance your culture. And I think you have to reinforce your style of play. If you can do those three things, so I'll give you an example. You can have really good players with an awesome style of play, but if your team doesn't get along, yeah. it's not going to happen. <laughs> your team's not united, right? You can have a really united team with great style of play, but if your players aren't very good, you're not going to win championship. So from my experiences, you need all those three things, good players and develop them, an unbelievable team culture, and a great style of play. And Let, that's what we're trying to do. Forgive me, Coach. Let me jump in. Can that be accomplished at the University of Houston? And, and look, I give it this context that when I was a very young man many years ago, I never dreamed that U of H would have a, 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 a Div One program for women. Just didn't. Yeah. It, 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 the, the university, when I was there in the late 80s, early <laughs> 90s, was, was not even, it wasn't even culturally, the word you use, aware of the sport. It's taken years. I still believe this could be, by the way, and I've had conversations with, with former athletic directors a men's Div 1 team should exist at U of H. That, that's a whole yeah. other conversation for another day. I don't know yeah. why we haven't gotten there, but, yeah. but I've had that conversation, and, and I'm going to use this term. Uh, the excuses I've heard are not logical or make sense to me, but I won't put you on the spot about that one, Coach. But, but can that happen here at U of H? Are we on, on, on the road there to, to be a Texas, to be a Texas Tech, to be a Stanford, to, to be a BYU, among other many universities that... That, that, that have been living this for, for maybe decades? 
uh, I wholeheartedly believe that the answer is yes, or I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think um, one of my jobs when I was being recruited to be the next head coach was to see how serious the athletics department was about women's soccer. So I asked them, don't tell me anything about football, baseball, or basketball. Tell me what your investment is in women's soccer. Yeah. And I think their vision for the sport, their vision, how they plan to grow it, um, the monetary investment that they're willing to make uh, to make it grow uh, really sold me. And then obviously, you know, in our in our sport in particular, you can't get there without a good academic institution. And just the vision of our president here, President Couture, wanting to make this a top 50 public university. It was just a release that we're a top 70 public university. You talk about never seeing that happen. When we were growing up, we would have not seen that happen being U of H being one of the top institutions in the nation, now it's happening. And so you can't recruit to a place that doesn't have that as its backbone. And I'm just awfully proud to be here and, and with the support of not only the administration, but the whole university. Coach, yeah, I, I would not have uh, been in you uh, at U of H with the current standards, the academic yeah. standards back in my yeah. day. But so I'm very yeah. proud that, that somehow uh, I got my undergrad out of the way at U of H. So. <laughs> <laughs> very, very proud of that. Coach, as, as we wrap up, um, what's next for you? It seems like you found your home. You've talked about the opportunities you've had beyond U of H at the professional level. You've traveled the world. It seems this is a good fit for you, mainly because of family. It is. I think that it's been a long time since I've had, um, I'm the oldest of four boys, all my brothers and my, my mom, my dad at the games cheering us on. I think that means the world to me, spending time with them outside of soccer anniversaries or birthdays or Mother's Days, Father's Days. I think that's a big part of the package of why I'm here. And so that's been good. For us, it doesn't stop. We're recruiting right now, so that's my life. And uh, reaching out to communities and, and going and uh, spreading the gospel to clubs, such as the one that you're in charge of and overseeing. And I think that's another one of our goals, is how can we continue to connect to the community, the soccer community in Houston, to bring some more fans to the stands. And so that's always our, our main goal. Well, I'll tell you this subjectively, Coach. Uh, I think part of it to get people to the stands is what you're doing already, which is the quality product. And, and match in and match out, I, I continue just seeing development. It's enjoyable. It's fun. Um, not to be critical of previous incarnations of women's college soccer, but the quality just wasn't there 20 years ago. But that's changed, and the technical ability, the tactical uh, approach that I see from you and from other coaches is, is something that all of you uh, that are watching us, that are soccer fans, should enjoy. Male, female, doesn't matter. And that's what I think I take away from, from, from if you haven't had the opportunity to go to the University of Houston and catch a game live, it, it, it really is a, a, a great product among so many other stories to tell. Um, Coach, look, number one, thank you for your time. I hope we continue this open conversation. We want to thank you for all you've done, uh, not only to be with us here today, but, but for Houston soccer in general. Uh, a message maybe for, for those that, uh, that are interested in finding out more about the university, the program, and, and women's uh, college soccer in general. Well, there's, there's a lot of great opportunities to get to know us. One is come out to our games. I think our spring schedule is going to be released here within the next three or four weeks. And so we do have a spring season. It's called the non-traditional season. We have about five games. Uh, we'll play the University of Texas, Texas A&M, LSU, UTSA, and Rice. So we can play up to five games. So come out and watch us play. And that schedule is going to be released here pretty soon. If you're interested in, in, um, in us watching you play, there's many ways that you can do that is you can send us your schedule for upcoming tournaments, or you can actually join one of our ID clinics that's coming up. And uh, you can go to our website for that or our social media to find out more about our I ID clinics. And and listen, we are looking forward to, to, to seeing all of the, the fans out at our games, in particular in the fall. I think like Alex said, we're trying to put a good product together. We're trying to be different than just a regular college team that is physical and is playing long and uses athleticism as its primary tool to win games. It's a tactical game. In my mind, it's a technical game. It's a cerebral game on top of it being a, an athletic and competitive game, not to diminish those two qualities, but uh, we're trying to do so much more here at Houston that hopefully the, the product shows on, on the field. Uh, Coach, if you could also work on that weather, please, because 180 yeah. degrees outside 
yeah, makes yeah, it difficult well, for everyone. Can, can you get the air conditioning working at, at yeah, on yeah, Cullen? Yeah, we got to build, build an indoor arena for ourselves in the summer. So That might help. Coach Jaime Frias, it's always a, uh, a pleasure and, and an honor to speak with you, sir. We thank you for your time, and, and we want to wish you the best of luck, not only here in the spring, but in, in the years to come at the University of Houston. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate your time. And with that, we say adieu to Coach Jaime Frias, and thanks to all of you ladies and gentlemen that follow us here on another edition of Deportes Nation.